Hi there, I'm John Michael Garropy, and I'm the director, scripter, and producer of Say Hello to Blackjack. And with me, I have... I'm Robert Henderson, and I am the writer, creator, and sort of director of Cyber. Welcome to a uh, news episode, uh, number two for Say Hello to Blackjack. Have you get, done a yeah. news episode? Uh, we've done one generic, uh, like, about to kind of warn people of the subject matter. Yeah. But th that's the only thing. That's but that the was only just like a brief little yeah. three-minute thing. Yeah, this is yeah. the first in-depth one. Yeah, so we're, we're combining our news episode into one, and we're going to have them We're gonna have them both on each other's streams. So yeah. if you go to Cyber from Say Hello to Blackjack, don't listen to this news episode again. I think that's the big take. Well, or if you listen <laughs> to it on Cyber, don't bother to listen over there. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Don't listen to the same audio uh, yeah. news. It's just a waste twice. of time. What are you doing? You know, listen to the audio drama. That's the important thing. Yeah. That's why we're. That's part of why we're doing this. And, and while you're there, say hello to Blackjack. And say hello to Cyber. That yeah, doesn't it, work no, as well. No, not quite as well. Cyber your way over to oh. a butter body. Okay, yeah, we'll <laughs> go with it, sure. Part of the reason why we decided to actually put this together in the first place is because I had told people in my previous news episode I was hoping to get my season two done by by April 1st. And that clearly is not going to happen. April Fool's, everybody. Um, so uh, uh, because of the way that uh, it's just a long logistical problem process, I'm part of the way through. I've got uh, uh, all the actors' voices in. I've got all the actors' voices edited in. It's, now it's just about getting in sound effects and background stuff. But we do, we're doing 15 episodes in season two. So it's going to take, I'm thinking somewhere in the summer, and I don't know where. Better not to pin myself down at this yeah. point. Yeah, uh, Cyber is actually in a pretty similar spot right now. Currently, we have just about all the voices d uh, done and recorded for the final episode of Season 1. Uh, season 1 is being extended further along than we wanted to. Clearly, we are need time to catch up, so that's one of the reasons why we, dropped this, uh, we ended the season. Uh, we also... When we learned that this was going to be the last episode of the season, we also revamped things to make it a kind of a big event. We brought back every single actor and actress that is on it. Yeah. Not every character is revised, right. uh, but every uh, everyone who's done a voice for it is doing another voice again. Yeah. Like, I get jealous on my side because I see you constantly putting out episodes. It feels to me, because it takes me so long to do this, that you're just pumping out the episodes while I'm just waffling over here. And I know that's not the case. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's so much, it feels like less time for an audience who's like just seeing casually that more episodes are coming out when you're pouring all your energy into a project that feels like it's taking forever. So, to be perfectly honest, we were originally planning on doing one episode a month. Yeah. Um, so, then we, we were trying to build up a good, you know, front. we were trying to front load it. We were trying to have several ones done before we released a single one. Yeah. I think we had four or six completed before we actually released episode one. And then we're just like, I really want to release these. I really want to get them out there. Yeah. Uh, so, we started doing once every other week. Yeah, and we did. We were able to keep that on for a while until I think episode eight, uh, where we had to take a bit of a break, get caught back up, and then we started releasing them again. Unfortunately, when it came to episode sixteen, it took a long time to write. Work was busy for this. Really, what it comes down to. Your story is also getting more in depth too. I yeah, mean, part of the problem is the original first episodes was literally like your main character, uh, the the doctor. No, the 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 craftsman. The craftsman. The craftsman. Like doing an audio tape, yep, with with his project, and it's just like a, just a two person podcast with some very simple sounds, and you've moved into an adventure story by this point with multiple yeah. characters spread out. Yeah, that was the other thing. We kept getting larger and larger and larger, and every time I introduced a new character, Brian, who's my who plays the craftsman, he's also the uh, the audio guru who does all the recording and sound effects, and he really great and the show would be nothing without him yeah but every time i introduce a new character he's like hey bob do you have an actor in mind i'm like oh i got all that somebody i got i got an idea for it he's like wait what stop i got brian and say hello to blackjack season two did he tell you about that by yeah, the way? yeah I, he didn't tell me what he was playing though uh well he, he's he's i gave him a very boring part unfortunately <laughs> He was like, Brian, I've got all these ideas for who I want. But, like, he plays it very, very well. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's supposed to be, just be like, 
the level-headed doctor. Yep. So it's not as much fun to play that, but like he <laughs> plays very. He's got an excellent voice. He he really does. He has um, got a very good range too. This is a game that we both play. It's called L Five R. Part of it is the game company releases fictions uh, that are part of the fictional world of this. It's filled with samurai and magic and mysticism and a bunch of really interesting things. And there was a group of fans and pl- players of the game that made their own podcast or made their own uh, audio drama based off of those works. Huh, yeah. And Brian did several voices for those. Um, I don't think it's currently ongoing, but I actually really hope it picks back up because they were doing some excellent work. Right. So, something to look for. I broke our outline almost immediately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. We, we didn't actually explain what our podcasts were. Yeah, that, that's okay. <laughs> that's fine. You know what? Well, why did you go we first? We can just edit this in, yeah. splice it around. No, it's no, the magic of post. I got tons of uh, other <laughs> editing to do. They don't want me not editing Say Hello to Blackjack to make a perfect <laughs> news episode. What, what What is Cyber about? Uh, cyber is a. Uh, at its core, it's a cyberpunk themed audio drama. Um, it has aspects of BDSM in it. It's not exceptionally explicit. We no, try- yeah, I, I'm very afraid to even mention that because I feel like to people that I meet because like I feel they're going to get the wrong impression. It, from that's me. true. Like it when it started off, one of the big things about it was in BDSM community. There's a practice of the idea of somebody becoming something it's a, the art of intentional and willing and you know consensual transformation uh, tra- transformation of objectifying somebody uh, that is not to be confused with just be an asshole but yeah yeah but i noticed in cyberpunk in you know sci-fi in general there's an idea of objects becoming people like uh, you know, robots becoming humanity, you know, what it does it mean to be human is if you have just a memory uploaded to a computer, does that count as a person still? And so I kind of got the idea of like, there's the same idea just in two opposite directions. And I just kind of wanted to combine the two. In a sense, this is actually, I was thinking about this today and I'm like, well, he's really telling something very close to a Frankenstein story. I'm like, ah, Frankenstein ain't a perfect analog. And then I thought of Metropolis and I'm like, this is Metropolis, just like retold as a modern story, especially with like the whole entire like uprising, which comes up much later among the populace and stuff like that. It has some aspects to Frankenstein in it because yeah. you, you can't not be influenced by Frankenstein if you're creating sci-fi. It's almost the fundamental first sci-fi story. Right. You know, it's kind of sci-fi. It's kind of Frankenstein. If Frankenstein wasn't as much of an asshole... If he wasn't much as much of a jerk, if yeah. He, um, no, don't get me wrong. The the craftsman, <laughs> he's got a, he's, he's got a fair share of problems. Yes, yeah. He's got he's got an attitude problem. He's got a little bit of hubris to him, but ultimately he tries to take more responsibility for his own actions, which was kind of a recurring theme of, against Frankenstein. Yeah, why, the original book of Frankenstein. Yeah. Doctor Frankenstein whines a good chunk of the time, runs away a lot of the time. Yeah, is. Terribly non-confrontational and often often suffers for that. Yeah, and conversely, the monster, the quote-unquote monster, you know, is almost like the perfect being. It's like yeah. noble and uh, smart and, you know, just has an ugly exterior. He's the nicest villain you've ever met. Like, from, like, a good guy perspective, like, he's almost the protagonist of the story. Uh, I absolutely think he's the protagonist yeah, of the story. Yeah. It's funny, I was actually just watching... The people who do extra credit uh, YouTube channel. Have you ever seen it? I I recognize the name and I can't think what it yeah, is. Yeah, they they do extra credit, which is their um, YouTube channel about games. They do extra history, which is their channel about uh, historical figures. They started a new one called Extra Sci-Fi. Huh. It's absolutely worth watching. In the first, I think, like four or five episodes, is actually dedicated to Frankenstein. Yeah, just going in depth about what. What was important about the story, how it influenced later stories, what influenced the Frankenstein. Right, right. So I'm, I'm sure some of it, the history of Mary Shelley and all yeah. that. Swinging over, say hello to Blackjack. Because, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we have to keep making yeah, so, yes, absolutely. Because we will talk all night long otherwise, and you guys don't have the time for that, unfortunately. But uh, say hello to Blackjack is based on uh, an original manga by Shuho Seto. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shuho Seto back in 2013, released his work to the roughly the public domain, is what it is. It's not quite that legally, but close enough. Um, so I saw that, and I was all over it. Uh, turns out that not only did he release 
a work to the public domain, the Japanese manga to the public domain, but it's actually a really good manga. It follows uh, a doctor by the name of Saito, and Saito is one of the elite, comes from the best classes of uh, Japan's medical universities, and he is just now starting entering the uh, uh, university hospital as an intern, and he's kind of realizing that uh, reality is not like his classroom, that there are a lot of ethical questions having to deal with who are these patients, how do we treat them, who's responsible for them, who should be making decisions, should it be the patient or should it be the doctor, I mean, should it should be the patient's family or the doctor, how much money should we spend on these, uh, these patients. All these problems are wearing on him thin because uh, Saito's trying to always make the most, uh, the right ethical choice. He's naive uh, throughout, the, throughout a good chunk of our, our first season at least. But it's actually, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun to work with. Season one de deals with one patient, spends a lot of time with one patient. Season two, which is coming up, uh, completely tosses away the entire original cast of season one. Because I'm basing, because it's based on a manga, and I'm using the manga as my script. And Shuho Saito, you know, he just drew characters. <laughs> like, if he wanted to draw somebody else for a change of place, he would just draw someone else. And, like, that just makes me have to run out and be like, I have to recast everybody because he threw <laughs> everybody away in that first season. So I end up having to pull in an entirely new cast for season two. But season two is a full story on its own. So if you don't even want to listen to season one, you don't have to. When season two comes out, you just jump in there. It's fine. But, yeah. It's it's been a process. It's been a great show. Uh, great show. I rather appreciate uh, all the work that Shuho Sato has done for me already. Um, oh, having your script all <laughs> laid out for you—that must be nice. <laughs> I mean, I do script it. I combine characters. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's you know necessary in an audio drop, just explaining something uh, and making it sound natural. Which making it sound natural is oftentimes a problem. Uh, trying to switch over from visual medium to audio medium. Yeah, um, uh, what do you do when the story kind of relies on visual cues on the manga? Part of it, sometimes the visual cues get extended by accident. I have to be careful to like not add too much. Mm -hmm. So like someone is cooking ramen noodles yeah. and like the easy explanation to do that is to be like, oh, let's put in all the sound effects for the process of cooking ramen noodles, which is just like, <laughs> that's a bit much. I have to find a way to condense that, just a few key sounds that people would be able to recognize. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, um, there's there's a lot of different little things like translation issues or things that just don't come off right. Like you can see what the author was originally going for, but it doesn't really make as much sense here. So little things, a lot of little things. Um, I know this is slightly off our script a little bit, but, yeah, since, sure. but since you brought up the idea of translation issues, yeah. why don't we talk about the name of your podcast? Oh yeah, sure. No, so my uh, the name of my podcast is Say Hello to Blackjack. Blackjack is not in the story. Ever. Ever, ever. <laughs> there is, so, if I do this entire thing out, it's going to be like seven or eight seasons or something like that. Blackjack never appears. Blackjack's a character by, by Osama Tezuka. Uh, he's one of the godfather of manga, and he wrote like a godlike uh, doctor character because Osamu Tezuka was a doctor, so writing a manga about a doctor was like easy for him. Yep. But he wrote in a character who was just like this sort of perfect doctor who would like play Robin Hood sometimes if you were just really rich and you didn't deserve his care. He would charge you a million dollars, but then he would take that money and like do like work for other people that were much more needing stuff like that. The name say hello to blackjack is like saying hello to blackjack or like another translation of is it is give my regards to blackjack. It's like in other words like oh you're you're not like you're trying to act like blackjack. Why don't you give him my regards? You know, it's just like yeah. It just doesn't translate. It doesn't it doesn't translate and then in the process if you know a little bit about manga you know who Blackjack is. Or maybe you need to know a little bit more than a little bit. But, like, if you've heard of very popular characters in manga, you would eventually come across Blackjack. And that just makes it even harder to... Because I don't know... I don't know if I'm supposed to stop people when they say, oh, it's about Blackjack. I'm like, uh, I, uh, I don't know. How do you feel about Blackjack? <laughs> Conversely, if you don't know... If you're not familiar with the character of Blackjack, it's like... What does Blackjack have to do with hospitals? Right, right. And the name's in incredibly long. <laughs> <laughs> say hello to our long podcast name, like, which is Say Hello to 
Blackjack. Sonic Society put up Say Hello to Blackjack in two episodes, which is great. Did Sonic Society yes. got to you? Did you get Cyber up? Yeah, we did, actually, just a couple weeks ago, um, Cyber went up. It, that's that's excellent. Yeah. In their very sparse introduction, they're like, Blackjack is at it again. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> what, 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 what can one do? But... Uh, yeah, did you did you want to talk about like how your podcast is named? Yeah, or, like, my podcast with naming name. your podcast Cyber. I originally went for a very minimalist name. Yeah, my name's too long and awkward. Your name's too short. Short, yeah. <laughs> because the idea behind it was, you know, cyber means it is part of cyberpunk, very clearly. Even, um, however, cyber also has this connotation of you know cyber sex and sexiness and stuff like that. Um, so I'm like, oh, I'll just call it cyber, and it's like combining those two things together, and it'll be perfect. It'll Very be clever, element. Rob. Yes. <laughs> I'm a wordsmith, you see. But yeah, so I was trying to be really clever about it, and I got too clever for my own good. Because, let me tell you, when you try to search for cyber on anything, it doesn't come up. Because yeah. everything else comes up before it. I got that minor problem, because obviously the original manga is more popular than my uh, podcast, but... Also, the original manga just isn't that popular. It won awards back in 2000 in Japan, but, you know. Yeah, it was was credited for, like, being very realistic of, you know, actual doctor, of actual hospital. Uh, of what practice actually yeah. is, between both the medical side and the, and yeah. the uh, dealing with the ethics side of it, yeah. So, um, no, no, it's, it's, it's an award-winning podcast. But if you go to Wikipedia right now and type in, say hello to Blackjack, you won't get anything. You, you will actually get Shuho Sato's page okay but the link for say hello to blackjack is red nobody's actually made that one of the nice things about having that awkward name though is that i have the website say hello to blackjack.com it's just like nobody made this so why not um i think we were looking at um we were actually looking at a website and trying to trying to get a web domain and i think i'm pretty sure the cyber podcast or the cyber podcast was taken oh and it was just one of those i'm holding this hostage and i will sell it to you for Somebody quoted us like $40,000. that's something. insane. Yeah, we were just kind of like... <laughs> like, the word podcast is in there. How much are you expecting people to actually spend for it? <laughs> this is going to be worth millions, I tell you. Rob, we have some... We, we both know each other. We are both friends before this. And we both... I, I would like to think we, we were friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went to my house. Yeah, no, it's... of course. We, we, you were first working in Myriad Games. Yep. When did we first start working in Myriad Games? Oh, jeez. Uh, 2000 and... I want to say like 2003, 2004? Yeah. Around then. Like I was... I wouldn't say one of the first customers, but I was I was like the customer who was like making sure the Magic the Gathering uh, tournaments was firing. Yeah. Because you're and, oftentimes just four people for a little while. Yeah, um, and I got brought on to be a... Uh, originally, I was just asked to be a judge for Magic the Gathering because I was a DCI certified judge and... The owner of it, Dan, said, hey, you know, I see that you're in the area. Would you like to be a judge? I'm like, actually, I would like a full job. He's like, yeah. hmm, come on by and see what happens. Jeffrey Norman Bobo, um, who used a student. to... A student. A yes. student. Who used to be with me <laughs> on the Nerd Fountain podcast, was also on the Mirror Games podcast mm -hmm. that you were on with me. Um, that goes back to... Jeff says we started working on it in 2007 and didn't officially launch our first episode till 2009. I don't know how that really works... But if you look it up, you'll find that, like, 2009 is some of our earliest podcasts. Huh. Um, and then, like, we stopped in 2013 or 2014 or something like that for the Mirror Games podcast. Maybe it was, like, started recording late. I, I, I presume he must mean, like, in December we started talking about it. And in yeah. January of, like, 2009. I don't know. I'm, I'm quite sure there was, like, that process of us figuring stuff out. That's not the question. But anyhow, that podcast airs 2009. And then we stopped doing that in 2013. How long were you in there? Because I, 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 was, I wasn't in there for very long. I think I was only in like three episodes. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Okay. Like, at the time, I wasn't living close by. So right. it was kind of a, a bit of a hike. Yeah. We have fun. We're on a show together. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, trying to what, I'm trying to remember what games we played. I know we played, appropriately enough for my podcast at least, we played uh, Android. Oh, we played Android. That's yeah, funny. Yeah, th that was one of the games. And Seven Wonders, I want to say? We started both working on audio dramas simultaneously, not knowing the other person was doing it. Yeah, it was kind of independent from each other. I remember you like mentioned it beforehand, but I, for the life of me, I can't remember if it was like before or after I started working on my podcast. 
I find it odd. Even if that was the case, it was it was that. It was just like a, a passing comment of like, oh, that's cool. It wasn't like you started doing one because I was doing one. Yeah. It was, you know, podcasts are all the rages now. <laughs> oh, audio drama. That's what the kids like. <laughs> it, that, that is true. Doing a podcast is, you know, not common, but it's, still, it's a little bit more common practice than trying to write a whole audio drama. Right, right. Um, and I don't think there's there's a few that are really popular, but still even then not, not popular popular. You mentioned their names, and I can't remember the name of the big one. Uh, uh, welcome to welcome Night vale. to, Thank you. Welcome to Night Vale gets a lot of attention, but mostly gets a lot of attention amongst people who listen to audio dramas. It, it was actually on the Colbert show. Oh, was it? Yeah. That was, oh, that's pretty cool. It was on the Colbert show, I, I, or some of the late night drama. I think it was Colbert show. And I think they actually have a TV series in the works. Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're doing well. That's a lot of attention. When I first started listening to audio dramas, seriously, I was working at the IRS, and I was listening to a lot of pendant audio productions back then. And I was constantly listening to like Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman. And they were making some excellent material at, at Penn and Audi and a lot of fan base audio dramas. And uh, I listened to, I had listened to those for like the four years that they were up. And then they were all of a sudden gone. One day, all pulled, which at this point they had, they were into like, like nine DC shows and like Star Trek show and uh, Indiana Jones I think show. A season desist or something. A season desist came after them. Obviously, most of what what was happening because everything was turned off simultaneously. Everything was pulled down from YouTube, iTunes. The person who was in charge tried to remove all the stuff from Wikipedia. Wikipedia said, "No, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Put that stuff back up, buddy." And they had to, a good long talk in the description section because I was like doing as much research as I could because I wanted I wanted yeah. the show back. I wanted to listen to that at least have this all closed up because it all kind of ended in the middle of nowhere with yeah. many of them. Um, and also the page that includes the pennies, which is their awards, they removed all the rewards that they had given their own acting staff. And she's like, oh, that feels so terrible. But mm. like a season desist, you know. That's one of the reasons why when I saw Say Hello to Blackjack pop up and it was in public domain, I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, I never expect to get anywhere <laughs> near the level of success the, that uh, Pen and Audio has done. But at the same exact time, I don't want this ever taken yeah, away from that, me. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, speaking of which, has has any uh, fans come up to you and uh, or sent you an email or anything like that of saying, "Hey, I was a rich, I was a fan of the manga and I re- found your series." I haven't heard that that much. I'm just, I think part of the problem is it's just not popular enough. I've I've tried contacting Shu Hoseido actually really? on Twitter, but he speaks Japanese and I speak English, so I send out something to him in English, and I'm like, ah. No response. That makes sense. It's just like some American fan. Like, what? What is this? Or like, you you use like Google Translate, and you're like, uh, I don't quite get what he's saying, but he likes say hello to blackjack. Good for him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I've got a friend who knows Japanese. I should contact him, but you know, it's I haven't really tried too hard because I got season two coming, and maybe yeah. I'll try again when when there's more substantial stuff to say. Like, thank you, thank sense. you for having put this out there so that somebody in America. Could like have a few viewers that would actually like to listen to this as well, you know? Yeah. What are we on? What are we moving to? Uh, we're all over the place. Uh, we did the. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I actually have to talk about how I started Cyber. Oh yeah, sure. You know, we talked about we talked about this, like happened at the same time, right? Oh, actually, my friend Brian, uh, we were talking together and saying like, you know, we really want to start a podcast. And he really wants to. He's really good with vocal works, as we mentioned before, and we tossing back and forth ideas. Um, I actually did come up with a few other ideas I would think might eventually want to go into. I think that'd be a lot of fun. But at the time, I was already writing a short story of Cyber, basically. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, I enjoy writing, but I burn myself out really easily when I'm writing on one thing constantly. And... As soon as we switched over and I started writing into like an episodic format, it just clicked. It just felt really natural, just very easy. Yeah. Um, also, the idea of like, you know, I'm writing something, then, you know, a couple weeks later, editorial magic happens and it's suddenly a real thing that I can go and see. That's, it felt so rewarding for that. Yeah. Yeah. I know the first, the first episode being done alone is just like, you're like, woo, march around, show everybody, like, <laughs> 
go on Facebook like I made this thing like five people give you likes you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows what you're talking about for a little while it, um, I know most of my actors in the first episode they had no idea what, what they were doing <laughs> I'm like I'm making an audio drama they're like what I'm like you're a voice they're like huh because <laughs> mostly I use friends and family for like uh, well I, I exclusively use friends and family for season one and most of them were great and a lot of them required a lot of editing and a lot of say that yep. again now try that one more time do it this way because oh because they're just like you know no if you're not practiced with the process then it's just going to take you that much longer and it's going to take longer to pull something out of you but it can sound just as good as a professional it just that much longer to do yeah. it you know season two we're mostly working I, I i had to put a search out like i said i changed the entire cast I only have so much friends and family that I could actually be interested in, or that I can drag around for this. I went and grabbed everybody who was easy to grab for me. Yep. I, I you must deal with this. So, <laughs> oh well, put it this way. Uh, Drone Thirty Three is played by my wife. Yeah, yeah. Who uh, is a very talented singer, and I, I eventually want to work in Drone Thirty Three singing at some point. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. Because that, of course you do. Yeah. That makes tons of sense. But yeah, then there's Brian, who, of course, is a big close friend of mine. Um, you know, I was best man at his wedding. And yeah, so we were close. And then we just reached out to friend after friend. And some of them were closer to, uh, some of the friends were closer to me. Some of the friends were closer to Maria. But, you know, we just reached out and found talent we're there. And luckily, we have a lot of talented people. Uh, people that either have done uh, singing, have singing careers, or or just play a lot of role playing games. So I found that yeah. really, like a lot of those people like are used to doing. They have voice a natural and acting character. talent, as it stands. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, what were we talking about? We're how, talking... how did Cyber get started in the first place? Did you finish so, up on that, or did we get completely sidetracked? No, that, that's a, kind of was on the topic of. Eh, yeah, no, we got we got sidetracked. <laughs> so, who am I kidding? Um, so that's how the idea we started a podcast. The original idea, I kind of already touched upon it before, yeah. of wanting to combine uh, cyberpunk and BDSM. And what inspired you to start working on audio drama? It was uh, just talking to Brian at the time of saying, like, you know, this might be a writing style that would really work for me. Did you have any uh, audio dramas that you were looking to replicate? Yeah, we. Uh, like, I'm a big fan of Welcome to Night Vale, yes. as we talked about. Well, uh, 359. Uh, that's another really great, also sci-fi, audio drama. I just fell in love with it. I, I love being able to just listen to a story unfold like that. Yeah. I think it when you don't have visuals, everything has to be specifically created. Yes. And this is you know something you know quite well, of course. Right. I remember in the first episode, we did all of our own Foley work. And if you're not familiar with the term, that means basically making the sounds that appear in the story. Yeah. So, you know, dropping something, walking, anytime you hear something, there's nothing to put in there by accident. The electronics beeps and boops in the background? Was that a, a soundscape that you picked up from someplace? Um, uh, I, I, think that was a, I think that was something. That sounded like. generated. Yeah. yeah. It, actually, I think that was something we didn't have originally, but then we found it for a later episode. And oh, then and then we, you put it back. Then we put it back before we actually released it. Yeah. That, that's what caused that. Um, eventually, we started using like websites that have free, fully work on it. Yeah. And a couple actually paid ones so that weren't too bad. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, which is great, but the downside is when you're looking for something, there's a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, there's also like the I need thing X and like no Google search is going to give it to you. You'd be like, oh, I need exactly this, you know, and it's just like you're I'm trying to think of something specific that I was recently looking for, but it, it's it's just even stuff like door slammings where you're just yep. like, oh, for love of no, it's not a creaky door. Stop it. It's not a giant heavy door. <laughs> it's like, oh, I need a sliding shutter. How do I get this? And it, it, it just becomes this giant project of like, there are so many times where I spent way too much time looking on the internet for the exact sound I could have gotten when I could have just stood up, made the sound, sat back down. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's what you have to do. Yeah. Uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. In the course of making, looking for sound effects and making things... Have you ever had any happy accidents or discoveries? So something that wasn't originally intended, but you're like, oh, this would really work for something. Definitely had a few, but trying to remember them is kind of difficult. I know at one point in time, there's a, a sound in the first episode that's supposed to sound like a combination. Uh, the the actual visual was Shuho Sato had shown a picture of a person's heart in open surgery, 
And then you flip the page, and in the same exact position, you saw dinner of a doctor as he was just about to eat. Like, spaced out like oh, that. That's... So it's supposed to be like, a, this is, you went straight from surgery, now you're in the cafeteria, and he has to, like, you know, get this in his head, that this is, like, normal for him. But, like, I obviously I can't show that visually, so I had switched that over to a sound effect where one of, like, one of the doctors is having problems, uh, or, like, Saito is having problems, he, he, he looks like he might just throw up, and then I have a sound effect that sounds like it could be throw up, or it sounds like it could be something slopping onto his, uh, slopping into a bowl, and you can't figure out which one it is technically because I switch over to a cafeteria sound, and the sounds just at the same exact time that pulls that. Oh, that's board. that's well done. I don't know if that actually successfully, like, if people can parse that that was what I was going for, but they either get one sound effect or the other when they're listening to it in their head. So, like, that was that was the idea at least. So that. In order to get that sound effect, because we're talking about happy accidents, I was like looking through all kinds of random stuff. It turned out like pouring wet rice into a trash bag was the actual sound <laughs> effect. It does sound pretty disgusting after <laughs> everything's said and done. But yeah, no. Uh, what, what have you had for the happy accidents? You must have hit something. I mean, there were a couple of times that I think we found the sound effect that we use for Pax's weapon, which is supposed to be like this baton like a stun baton type of thing and we kind of found that on when we were looking for something else and that was like something like oh we, we need to remember this i'm not sure if i actually created the weapon for that i might have the other thing that i remembered I, this wasn't so much a happy accident this was brian being brilliant and going off my script but in a really good way uh he's like hey i have an idea you know we have director shelbourne who is this in charge of the mega corporation. She's kind of the... I kind of describe her as the... The Loki slash... Um, what's that trickster from a lot of Shakespearean? Uh, Puck? Puck, yeah. yeah. She is the, She's kind of like the power behind the scenes. And, you know, it's a cyberpunk story. So mega corporations don't have a very positive influence in most of the time. Yeah. She's a little bit more human than I think other cyberpunk directors often are portrayed as but the idea behind the uh, world of cyber was that it was kind of mirroring greek mythology where the directors and everything would be like the uh, mount olympus so that's those are your gods and they would like you know look down upon the mortals and play with their lives yeah so i told brian about this theme you know like okay well director shelbourne is actually representing uh, venus because Shelbourne. Right. Hey, I'm He's clever. Cute. Wordsmith. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, you get it. You get it. So Brian went to me and said, oh, well, considering that, I have a really good idea of you know, director Shelbourne playing um, a piece of music that represents Venus. And that would be uh, actually Venus from the Plants uh, Suite uh, from Holst. And it was brilliant. You know, we had to find a public domain copy and everything to put it in. But yeah. It worked so well for the scene because um, it's just a scene of her, you know, relaxing, listening to music, and then listening to somebody's audio email. Because yeah. of course it's an audio email because we couldn't do it otherwise. But yeah, I the music just starts off very loud, but then still plays out through almost the entire episode. I think. Yeah, and yeah. It, it was definitely not in the script at all. I did not <laughs> have that amount of foresight. Where'd you get uh, the opening music from, by the way? Uh, the opening music is it's actually like a very from, cello heavy. Yeah, it's from a band called Anthem Noise. They are friends of ours. Okay, yeah. So Anthem Noise is a local band that we are friends with. Uh, Maria went to school with most of the members. Um, I know two of their members, Jordan and Russell. Jordan actually later on lends her voice to, uh, to one of the characters. Orpheus member two. Both of them, you know, we asked them, hey, you know, I love your music. This one really fits the the uh, really fits the theme well, at least on the surface. I would love to use it if you if you would let us. And they said, absolutely sure. Just promote us. And that's I've... that's great because like I've been trying to get some local artists specifically for say hello to blackjack with a a section I needed a song for, and I just couldn't line it up fast enough before my actors were like getting their scripts and whatnot. Yeah. So um, it didn't quite line up. But uh, like Free Music Archive is an amazing resource. Mm -hmm. You know, just like if, even if you uh, 
even if you don't have things like audio dramas that you're directing or anything like that, uh, just go there and listen to the music. There is tons of good stuff out there. Uh, the, we've we've used them for a couple other pieces of music. I, yeah. I, I believe that's where the there's a scene. Uh, actually, in the episode that you're in, there's a scene of Drone Thirty Three dancing, and the music that we have for playing the dancing. Actually, yeah, I believe it's from that side. I should I should credit my the the person the that does the intro to our show is uh, the Andrew Jader Palm Quartet. I believe I'm saying that right. <laughs> Uh, it's it's some some Swedish guy, <laughs> sweet <laughs> who uh, yeah I, I made the song Octo Business and most of his stuff is just too random for but like this one would just hit the hit the right note just kind of sounding like you're in a mystery it's um, kind of appropriate yeah where where are we what are we, uh, we are all on? over the place of course we are um, our process yeah I mean, we should probably bring up. Sure. Why don't we? Why don't we talk about process? So, how do you how do you write your episode? Because I'll tell you how I write my episodes. We can do this real fast. I write my episodes by looking at the manga, looking at the two versions of the manga, because there's a fan translation as well. So I actually have to set them both on my screen to take a look at how both people did it. One's a more official translation, was done rather after the fact. Take the official one as a sort of a gospel use the second version as a sort of maybe they had a better idea and then just try to not write what they say word for word because it's not going to translate perfectly uh there's going to be tons of things where it doesn't make sense there are times i sit down with john and john does recording and he's just like that sounds awkward I'm like john redo it however you want because this is just a translation ultimately it's gotta it's gonna yeah. change so we're not we're not going for exactness anyhow yeah, there was a time when I was actually thinking to myself uh, that one of my processes might have been to go put my show on YouTube and do a picture pages uh, or uh, <laughs> uh, 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 reading rainbow yep. style where I would like put interpose like panels from the original manga on top of it. But there's been too many little changes and that's no longer practical and also time consuming. Yes. <laughs> it sounds better in the abstract than, you know, oh, I've done this project. Let me make a second project for myself, you know. So how how do you, how do you write uh, cyber? Well, with usually, a bottle of gin. <laughs> <laughs> usually, when, usually when I write cyber, I'm actually on the train going to or from work. That's okay, it. that's, that's cool. That is the most common place for me to be writing, and I usually realize like, oh crap, I have to write, and I cry to myself a little bit because of how far behind I am. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I gotta do something, and then I get an idea, and I I run with it. The hardest part is just getting that first page. Yeah. As soon as I have an opening scene, I can just keep going. You can march forward, I, yeah. Yeah, I have an idea of like, okay, I need a situation. And then as soon as I get a situation, I can kind of role play the characters out, find out what they would do in that situation. Right. And sometimes it goes in very different directions than what I was expecting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's what it, that's what ends up happening. Do you outline at all? Do you have any idea? I, I have some... Do you do the uh, Neil Gaiman version of outlining, which is I outline this, then I start writing and I throw the outline away immediately? Yeah, basically. I, I had a brief outline for season one and it didn't work out. Yeah. It, like, there was going to be some very major differences in season one. Yeah. First and foremost, the craftsman was going to die. The craftsman oh. was actually supposed to die in episode eight. He was the one who was going to get shot and be That's killed. interesting. Well, I mean, like, you get rid of, like, one of your, your yeah. best voice actors. It, I mean, not, it, to, not to, like, you know, play favorites here, but, like, um, getting rid of Brian would have been a real problem. It, exactly. And, and I was actually going to keep the character a little bit through recordings and other things of in flashbacks, but I wanted to tell more story with the craftsman. And Brian said, you know, I don't want to... Yeah, I respect your idea. I want you to do the story you want to do, but, you know... Can we do more with the craftsman first? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm glad. We, I'm glad we didn't actually go with that route yet. Yeah. How about recording people? So originally, this was a matter of just trying to drag people back to my house and getting out the microphone and sitting them down, and just being like, "Just here you go, read these lines." Uh, some people are better. Some people are better at this than others. John has acting experience, and he's played tons of role playing games. So having John Russo sit down and do his lines was just like a normal organic experience. It's just really weird being a director the first time you're doing it because you want to tell people like, "No, no, you figure it out." And she's like, "No, I have to tell you what I want because you are first of all have no idea sitting down exactly what I'm uh, what I'm talking about, what I'm looking for." Like the actors don't know what I really mean. They have, they sometimes they have, most of the time they haven't read the whole script. So they don't know where I'm coming from in the first place. So it's, it's tricky, just that transition of figuring things out. This season, season two, I had John sit down, John read his lines. I had Joe read Toshi's lines, Toshi's back. I had to write in a lot of Toshi. 
But part of that was the consolidation of characters. Things there's just too many characters. Sato's just writing. He writes in extras. He writes in an extra. Yeah. You know, like I don't have that option. I I can't just draw in uh, an extra into my audio drama. Well, you can <laughs> just have somebody do like. And uh, now I'm this character. And uh, now I'm this character. <laughs> Pretty much. How many voices can a person actually do? I don't have Jonathan Winters on staff. Um, <laughs> So I wrote Toshi a few more lines, so Joe came back and he read uh, lines for that. But everybody else was this much larger process of me doing, like, a uh, casting call and, like, going to... I, w- I actually picked up uh, quite a few of my ca- cast from Star Now, strangely. Because Star Now is kind of more for, like, straight-up actors. But a lot of actors put down that I do voice acting also. So when I started advertising on Star Now, I picked up a lot of, a lot of good voices from Star Now. People are just trying to break into the industry and... It sucks I can't give them anything in return. Yeah. But I try to, at the very least, give them a, a, a nice recommendation and put them on IMDb, which sometimes that's helpful. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. You, I'm not the fancy guy in IMDb. Sorry. <laughs> um, well, that, that's a, no, no. Yeah. You should put everybody on IMDb. It's yeah, a really good should, idea. That's, good, that's a very good idea. It, it, at the very least, some people are just like, I'm on IMDb. They're, like, they're really excited for that. It's yeah. just, but anyhow... Uh, how have you been doing with your recording? So when we first started off, Brian and I were present for just whatever recording. Um, well, granted, it was pretty easy because the only other person we recorded was Maria and then later on Jason. Later on, you know, after Brian kind of got what I was looking for, uh, Brian would just basically give me the takes after they were recorded. And I'll be like, okay, I, I really like this one. I really like this one. Go through it. And then after that, even further, Brian does most of the directing now. Uh, he's really good at it. He's really talented with it. The only person I really direct is Brian himself because you got to have a second opinion there. Right, right. Um, we typically, as a rule, always do at least three takes for every single line. Right. And try to vary it up. 90% of the time, I don't care if the actor does something differently on the, like, you know, changes a few words or reads a little bit differently. Yeah. I love it. And whatever's more organic, that's going to come out be better normally. Yeah. Once in a while, I want to use specific choices of words because they're either a reference to something or I plan on bringing it back later on. Yeah. Um, that actually happened with you because yeah. it was making a comment of um, Our Fair City. Yeah. Which is another podcast that I listen to. And you didn't know that at the time. It was uh, you were trying to change the words of something, something along those lines. I can't yeah. remember. My originally when I did the mayor, I, I, I it's just I put in my best mayor Quimby, um, <laughs> and that got rejected, rightfully so. But <laughs> so you gave us three versions of the mayor. The, yeah, the one that we ended up using, uh, Mayor Quimby. And you be like this evil <laughs> professor, oh, way over the top villainous <laughs> guy. He was like, he was sprayed up almost exactly like the professor from Lost in Space, like the original. Yeah. And it was so glorious. I, I knew it wouldn't get accepted, but I was like, I'm going to give them to sit them anyways. I, you have no idea how close we were to Kashiko. <laughs> Mostly because it was like a, there was one line where you're like ducking for cover. <laughs> and then you're like, ugh, or something with a regular voice. But you're just, <laughs> It's just this over the top scream of like pathetic, like, you know, the, the final boss shows to be a pathetic weenie. Yeah. It was such a perfect sound effect. I really wanted to use it. I swear the next time, if I ever come up with a second character for you, yeah. it's going to be for that voice. Yeah, it yeah. has to be for that voice. No, definitely. But yeah, no, I found this oftentimes because you talk about like making sure everybody gives you three takes. And when they're sitting with me, I'm making sure there is always, uh, normally it takes more than, than, than two takes anyways to do something. But I make sure they always, even if they do a line perfectly, give me the take a second time because I have had problems beforehand. I, I did it from the very beginning that I was doing always at minimum two takes. I have learned stuff from people having sent in their voice acting stuff. And like part of that has also changed. Like uh, I have a small, like a speech in like episode 16 or something like that from the actor's perspective. Some, a lot of the voice actors, when they send in their stuff, they would oftentimes ask like how many takes you said. And I would oftentimes say like, Oh, like the more takes you give me, the better I can make you sound. That's my general principle. So I leave it up to them. But in the future, I'm learning always tell them minimum two, minimum two, because, uh, you know, a lot of the, I, I understand the impetus of like an actor wanting to be like, I'm going to give you my best take and then editing that and sending it out to you. But 
there is a tremendous amount of value in giving people options. Yeah. And that's also changed, like, just handing stuff over to you. I've been doing some reading short stories for uh, Centropic Oracle. Just seeing what other people have been giving me has changed how, as a voice actor, I've been sending stuff out. Because my first thought process also is, I want to make this sound as good as possible and then send it out to you. I want to do all the work because I want to make a good product. Yeah. Obviously, there's some amount of trust that needs to be done. The director should... You have to trust in whatever the director's doing, you know, because yeah. um, their their goal is is the same as your goal, except they have their hands right in the middle of stuff. There were, there's probably a few takes I wish that we could have other, a few lines we wish I had other takes on. Uh, they're not very common, though, and they're usually pretty okay still. Yeah. Um, I remember recording with Midori. For the first time. Uh, only going to get to record with her once a year. She's um, a sex educator that goes to a convention that we go to. And was actually one of the people that gave me a, a, the idea for the short story that later became Cypher in the first place. Okay. So because she had that inspiring role to, to it, I want, really wanted to get her for a voice. Yeah. And on her recordings, it, she did a great job, but I wish I got a few more takes with them because some of it came out a little bit flat. Right, right. And I remember we were recording, it was after, easily after 11.30 at yeah. night. And it was after, you know, she just taught a bunch of classes. It was it was kind of a mess. Yeah. But um, it, still, she did an amazing job and, you know, yeah. gave if, if you happen to be a voice actor and you're listening to this or you're interested in voice acting and you're listening to this, uh, when you give multiple takes, do make sure you put variety in there. Yes. Because, like, getting three takes in a row that sound Aesthetic. identical doesn't help at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only exception to that, I would say, is if you think there was, like, some sound in the background. Yeah, yeah. Like, if you think there might be something off on it, maybe do the, another take. But that does not count as your minimum two. You have yeah. to do a, a variety there. Yeah. What we get? Uh, other projects. Sure. So I've been uh, working on a show by the name of Popcorn Roulette. Uh, it's a show which you need to get invited to at some point in time. I would love to be yeah. invited to it. Yeah. Um, the general idea behind Popcorn Roulette is I ask somebody to come on the show. This is on YouTube. It's a video as opposed to the audio projects we've been working on. Um, I ask someone to come on the show. They suggest a movie. We both go watch the movie independently. I do a bit of research. We get back together and we spend 30 minutes. We just chaw out uh, everything we can about that uh, about that movie and like what we like about it, what, what was wrong, uh, like you know some philosoph uh, philosophical arguments uh, get mixed in in there, uh, some stuff about process, that sort of thing. But it's it's not it's not like a boring droning thing, the like, uh, actor's studio sort of stuff. <laughs> uh, it's just ultimately two people talking about movies. Uh, it's called Popcorn Roulette because it, I want it to be at random. I'm trying to get as diverse a group on there as possible. I of course. Am a white man in my early forties, uh, so I tend to attract a lot of other white men that are middle aged. But <laughs> hey, uh, I try to spread out as much as I possibly. Well, I'm glad that you invited me because <laughs> as a white man in my mid thirties, I think I can give you a lot of variety that you wouldn't otherwise get. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> Your beard is on point, by the way. Today. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I but, should have a wax for it. Oh, do you? Yeah. That's funny. But anyways. Uh, yeah, no, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of editing. And I'm just like, this was supposed to be the fun project. One of the nice things about, like, this, I've been wanting to put a, a, a video show on YouTube for a while. Mm -hmm. And I have not had the ability to do it. Because every time I have a single time I get together, I start a project. I set up some cameras and do some lighting. I'm like, this looks terrible. Because I know, I took these classes when I was in college. <laughs> so I know what the process requires. But at the same exact time, I am not skilled. And I do not have the expertise. And uh, my dad had been working with public uh, public access media for a long time. And he'd been like, you should come down to the studio. I'm like, whatever. You know, you think to yourself, like, oh, these people are like, work a day. They barely want to work with you in the first place. And, like, that uh, um, you, you end up having to put your stuff out in, like, the local uh, channel. Like, uh -huh. I'm working with a, a mid-sized city. It's not very impressive, you know. But the exact opposite was true as soon as I started looking into it and dealing with them. I go there, everybody's super excited to see me and work with me before they even knew what my project was. They were just like, you're a human being and you're in here. Quick, get him in front of a camera. <laughs> um, but like, so that was, that was the thing. One thing too is that I get lighting and cameras and a sound booth and uh, interns who are working various roles at the same exact time. I got somebody who is my coordinating producer that I'm 
working with me like how do you want to do the show like how do you think we're going to do, be able to do things what are logistic things she suggested stuff i included it where i've actually had her as a guest because she is such a great personality herself and then they put it on their local channel and then as soon as it uh is on the air in their local channel i put it on youtube and you wouldn't really know that it was local access mm. there's no real telltale sign except for the fact that i happen to mention things about the studio on occasion in show but i could just not do that, you know, and there would be, you wouldn't know it would be the wiser if we have a full studio at our disposal. That's you know? pretty awesome. The only thing that actually tells you it's local access is that I'm clearly not as good <laughs> as some other people that would have real legitimate shows. But yeah, no, uh, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Popcorn Roulette, check it out on YouTube, and uh, it, you're gonna have to skip down past a few things that include Popcorn Roulette and their name because we just we just started. We've only got six episodes up. Uh, making a lot more. I think I've got like six filmed. And like I said, it's an editing thing. Yeah. I just, I thought I could just put this out there. And then I realized, no, I personally, I can't do that. So th this is a question that kind of goes to both this project and our previous projects. For every minute of footage or a minute of audio, how much work actually goes into it for you? I had one day very recently where it was literally <laughs> three minutes of video for one hour um and it, it that's just very frustrating because you i only have so much time to do this i tell people yeah. say hello to black dick i work as a security guard and i do a lot of my editing during the security work so um i didn't want people thinking that say hello to blackjack was delaying getting dragged along because i was picking up a new show so mentally i've only allowed myself to work on popcorn roulette when i'm not working security but it, that means I'm trying to stick it in every little space I can. So when I spend my one hour that I can work on popcorn roulette and only do three minutes worth of show, it feels oh, it feels so horrible. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I just look at a minute and like it's fine. You know, like this, I don't have to do anything here. That is one of the nice things that like there is uh, some level of pre-editing going on because there are people operating yeah. cameras and sound booth and all that. So there's less I have to work with. And uh, unlike an audio drama, where we're controlling everything this show is just a matter of like putting in some pictures over stuff and cutting out and cleaning up it's much simpler okay um especially the audio work where a lot of the audio work i i'm, I'm not even really even bothering to fade out or anything like that just chopping is mm -hmm. fine but you know with an audio drama expectations are completely different because it's all we're doing is looking all, all people are doing is listening to your feed, so it has to it has to sound perfect. I say neither of our audio dramas are perfect because no. we aren't we aren't we aren't professionals. You know, yeah. this is all it comes down to. Uh, unfortunately, we have day jobs. Yeah, we have day jobs. jobs right? Yeah, <laughs> night job. Oh, how much how much time does it take for you uh, for you to get your project? Because I don't even want to talk about say hello to blackjack. Like it, takes, it seems to take forever for me to get that stuff done, and I couldn't math out just how much time a lot. Um, uh, uh, like if I was to add everything together, you know, if I was going to actually, this is also part of the problem. Is I do mine in stages. Like I've legitimately just been doing season one and do it all the same exact yeah. time. Season two and do it all the same exact time. So like I just got done working on putting everybody's voices together from episodes one to fifteen. So I, it's really hard. Yeah. I don't have the basis to be able to do I, the math. I think the rule of thumb that we found out was about an hour work for every minute. Yeah, yeah. Between, I'm not even positive that includes writing because my writing kind of goes back and forth. Right. Because some of it, some of it actually goes by pretty quickly, and some of it is just a like a sort of can you come over like that stuff yeah. takes time, you know. We we tend yeah. to not think of that as being time to, but like yeah, you know, I've spent hours writing emails to people, you know. Oh, I've gone back and forth with several <laughs> actors trying like, hey, listen. Gotta get this episode out. When are you ready? You know, when can we do this? And it's been tough, especially with this last one. Uh, we've had, you know, it was only finished. I only finished writing it like right before the holiday season. So of course, I'm like, okay, we're ready to. Re uh, now we can record it, and everybody's like, already have plans. I'm like, well, okay, we can wait. Yeah. And it's just been a bit of you know getting this person this time. We do have a few actors, yourself included, who are able to record themselves and send it in. Right. But for other people, they have to come over. We have to arrange time for that. Uh, for one of our actresses, I actually had to go out to her place after work. Um, I work in Boston, and she happens to live in Boston. And I messaged her. I'm like, hey, listen, can I come over sometime and you know set up a recording for you? 
And she's like, well, I'm leaving for Canada tomorrow. And I'm free today, which, of course, I didn't bring my recording equipment. So right. I try to look around, see if there's any recording equipment I could get from one of my co-workers. When it's kind of a stretch, but, you know, some of them are musicians. So I thought, like, maybe you have a good microphone? Um, then finally I messaged Brian, who, once again, I'm my savior. I'm like, listen, you got any plans for tonight? He's like, yes, but why? Yeah. I'm like, well, we can record this person now, or we could wait another several weeks. <sighs> okay, then trooper that he is who drove into Boston with the recording stuff we recorded um, that, that night. Yeah. How is... Uh, you had a, uh, a Discord meetup which I unfortunately slept through. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I, like we said, I worked third shift and like all of a sudden I woke up and I'm like, oh no, I'm supposed to be someplace. <laughs> um, so I kind of like just jumped in at the very end and was like, hi! Okay, bye. There's nobody here anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like, but um, how did they, like that, that went over well, right? That went over really well. We have a Discord channel specifically for our patrons. They are able to join into the actual chat, send us messages. The Discord channel is actually open all the time, so anybody can just pop in, ask questions or anything. Right. Uh, we'll see it when we see it, basically. Right. But we wanted to have a planned meeting. I wanted an all hands meeting, and it was almost an all hands oh. meeting. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it, it actually went over really great. We were there for, I think, an hour or two. I think like two hours. Yeah. Of just people asking us questions. And it was people all over the world. We had uh, one of our patrons was from Denmark. One of our patrons was from France. Yeah. You know, and then we also, you know, all of us are on the East Coast. And then I have an actor in uh, the Midwest who was able to join as well. Yeah. So we literally have people kind of all around the world uh, going into this. It was really exciting. And we talked about, you know, our plans for season two, our plans for the rest of season one at the time. Right. You know, talking about our character motivations. So and... You had one question on your thing, because you're because the, the, the plot takes place in New Boston. Yep. And, like, one of the questions that I noticed that you had written up beforehand in the email that you sent everybody was, like, why is this place named New Boston? And I really want to talk about, like, is this taking place on Mars? Like, it, did, that get, did that get brought up? <laughs> that absolutely got brought up. Yeah. And it was really funny because it was not something I originally thought about. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, I think it was one of Brian's co-workers that, you know, asked him. And then Brian was like, I don't know. <laughs> and then... It's like, no reason why it couldn't be, you know? And then it came to, it came to me. It's like, does this take place on Mars? I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, if people started asking the question, I started thinking about it. I'm like, it could. I mean, they... I mean Boston's an excellent name for a city, that, like a, an early Martian base, yeah. because it infers the pilgrims. People think of that, you know? Yeah. It, it would have been, it would have made sense. Later on, I think it's episode, I think episode like 14 or 15 kind of touches upon the fact that no, it's not taking place on Mars. It is presumably at least still taking on Earth because they're talking about the ruins of old Boston. Right, underneath. right. So I, I did, that was one of the things I wanted to be addressed, and I finally gave an answer to. Um, but it was actually kind of funny because people started sort of, uh, sourcing like arguments why it's on Mars <laughs> uh, because they noticed that everything I had except for like one character was in metric. So they're like, oh, they're talking about metric because they're in that's space. Funny. <laughs> because how would it make Because this sense? isn't the United States anymore, <laughs> where they're, everybody talks. And, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, uh, I loved the theory, and I kind of hated to get rid of it. Yeah, um, but it just didn't work for where I wanted to take the story. Right? Did you have uh, any other other projects you want to talk about? I mean, like there is there is the uh oh fiasco, which I would like that we're working on right now to get out, which is just us let's playing the role playing game fiasco, which is a terrific game if you've never heard of it. It's yeah. basically role playing a movie, kind of like. Or... Yeah, it's yeah. it's a Coen Brothers movie. Yeah. Ultimately, you're role playing a disaster. Well, a disaster for the characters who are acting like idiots with no game master because everybody is kind of turning on themselves. Like, yeah, everybody has a relationship to another character, and they you know have some pros, some cons, and it's a role playing game that really focuses on the role playing. So it's a lot of fun. I know it's my favorite game. Uh, John, who plays Saito, he, he he's he's also should be on a o fiasco. He he uh it's pretty I'm pretty sure that it's one of his favorite games. If he doesn't <laughs> if it isn't exactly his favorite game, but like we're we're generally just fighting to get a group of like four together for it. But anyhow, this right now we're in like figuring it out stage. 
and if, if if and when we get it get it together, uh, I'm quite sure we'll end up telling you guys about it. So there's no other current projects I'm working on at the moment. Um, Brian and I worked together for a company called WHE Games. We made um, it was an indie board game and uh, card game company, and the products are still out there if you're interested. It was a lot of fun working on games, and actually have a bunch of games still on the back burner that I never finished. Yeah, that I really do want to get back to, but right now cyber is taking up all my free time that I have for creative process. Yeah, I do. Like I said, when I was when we were spitballing ideas for what we wanted the podcast to be about, I did come across a, another concept that I really think would be a lot very interesting. The idea was that it was about two guys that basically worked at a convenience store. Very clerks. Right. Uh, but the kind of the running joke was the convenience store was just a front for like some kind of secret organization. So a bunch of shady stuff is going on in the background and they're just kind of oblivious to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a bunch of like really weird things going on. Um, if you ever got uh, were able to watch... Welcome to Night Vale is kind of an example of like, you know, weird things going on, but the difference is the the host is kind of in on it. The host knows that there's weird things. Right. I wanted the idea of just like, you know, two guys that are just kind of oblivious to things or like why things are so strange. Yeah. Finding all these yeah. robes just kind of hanging here. What are these <laughs> robes and torches doing here? That's weird. <laughs> um, do you ever think that you're going to do anything with Blackjack? You know, if you ever... You were talking about, uh, yeah, I mean, like, with Blackjack running for... Like, if I was to do the entire thing, it would be something seven or eight seasons, and it's a lot. By that point, I, I'm quite sure I'd be exhausted. I would love to. This is what I would love to do. I would love to be able to take Blackjack, find a natural place for it to end. That may not be seventh or eighth season, because, like, like a lot of manga, once you start getting into it... Shuho Seto gets in this rhythm where it's almost like he can't stop writing about this one storyline. So the last storyline really lasts like a few volumes. And like the same thing happens to the storyline just before that. So I might just choose to like end before like one of those very long storylines pops up. But if that happens, one of the things I'm interested in doing is trying to find another manga or comic book creator and just being like, listen... I'd love to grab Alex Robinson because I love his stuff and he's not terribly well known. He wrote a um, uh, comic book by the name of Tripped, which uh, deals with part part of it deals with like it's a bunch of different storylines and a bunch of different characters. But one of the main storylines is that there's a a pop artist from the 1980s and he's kind of trying to figure out what to do with his life. And there's a man who's off his medications and think that this pop artist is talking to him through the music and then starts seeking that guy out to, yeah, it's Ooh. it's an interesting story. There's a lot of stuff going on. So I'd love to go up to somebody like Alex Robinson and be like, hey, I can't give you money, but I can make a nice audio drama for you if you really want to. This is probably going to require me going up to like 50 different people before somebody says yes. Well, you'll have you'll have uh, this. Uh, you'll have say hello to Blackjack. I have to say show hello to Blackjack like... to point to, and then just be like, oh, "Listen to the later seasons. We got better." <laughs> <laughs> it really takes off on season four. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that's an idea I, I would love to work with. But that that also kind of depends upon whether or not I'm still sticking around with audio drama. This is a lot of work. You know it, what I mean? It like, is a lot of work. Playing with popcorn roulette, it is funny to actually see it. Be like. Man, this is this is also work, but it's not like the like tear your hair out sort of work, yeah. you know. Where do you think cyber's going? I want to keep cyber going for a long time. My big desire for it is being able to t- basically retell a lot of Greek mythology tales, and I really think that the world of cyber, the a cyberpunk setting, can really accomplish that. Um, I mean, I put in a lot of references with the names, but Greek mythology is quoted and referenced so many times. I try to do a very almost blatant job of saying, like, you know, this person is this person, but what if this person was in a different situation? It's going with that idea. I'll put it this way. There's a good reason why, towards the end of season one, some people should catch the reference that one of the antagonists is actually named Nobody. That directly comes from my favorite mythology and my favorite story from... The Odyssey, I want to say, or is it the Iliad? Yeah, no, that's uh, oh no, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the Odyssey, but I'm not 100 percent certain. Yeah, it's what we, it's. We are educated people. We know these things. <laughs> John John Michael edited in. I mean, like it's the Odyssey is all about like uh, the, the, the Troy, trip. the Trojan War, right? 
It's the trip. But then there. there's more of it afterwards, and then Iliad's supposed to be the way back. I think it's the Iliad because I think it happens on the it's way. It's got to happen on the way back, yeah. right? It's Odysseus who's calling himself nobody, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we're educated. Yeah, guys. Well, we're educated guys. <laughs> so yeah, I basically wanted to have references to the characters and like that, and I think there's a lot of things I can keep going with it. I want to keep introducing the directors of these big mega corporations in as basically the the gods of Olympus. I want to tell about the stories about why it's new Boston instead of old Boston. Um, I was actually thinking there might be a place for the audio drama even after Drone 33's story is told. Huh, yeah. I want to live in this world for a while. Okay. Uh, I want to continue, I definitely want to continue with Drone 33, Terry, the Craftsman. I, there's a lot more to tell with them. But I don't feel limited to say that once this character's story is done, then necessarily the world is done. Let me sidetrack you for a second here. Have you read any of Battle Angel Alita? I have not. I have was recommend, It was recommended to me, and it's on my list of things to watch. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird. For the last, like, years, uh, the last couple of years, ever since I, you know, started even thinking about uh, this, I've been avoiding <laughs> cyberpunk stories. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, one of the movies I really wanted to see for the longest time was Ex Machina. Yeah. And I distinctly said, no, this is way too close to home. I do not want to... I'm afraid of unintentionally copying. That's something. interesting. Yeah, I, I I know I've been through <clears throat> patterns like that. Well, I have that problem with say hello to blackjack because. Uh, uh, are you copying a manga? I, well, I'm 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 copying a manga, <laughs> but Shuho Seto went on after making say hello to blackjack. He originally made it for like a, a magazine where he had a falling out with, and then he went to another magazine and made the new say hello to blackjack. That is copyright protected. So I have not looked at it at all. As very oh. afraid to steal any idea from that, you know. Okay. So um, because you, you just do it by accident, it's the same characters, it's the same universe, you know. Jesus, uh, that, um, that yeah, that's a little risky. So I just I haven't even looked at it. I have no idea what's kicking around in, the, in those yeah. books. I, I could be copying stuff from it by accident, which is also a slightly dangerous thing if you parallel something because it's the same world. But you know, I figured the, better to play it safe and just maybe not you look need at like it. an editor that's read it all, but you know, doesn't actually tell <laughs> you. Like, like, he just says like, you know, this. listen, this line, change it. Don't ask me why. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, Battle Angel Alita. Absolutely love those books. I I read the entire manga and then the second version of the manga. The the, the, I th- I think the author a movie who does out? this. There's a movie coming out. This is this really scares me because it's just like I really love the. Ma- this is one of the only mangas. I think it's the only. It's one of the only mangas I've read through all the way through, and definitely the the manga that has lasted me the longest that I've read all the way through because there's there's the first original story that t- started off in the eighties. And then ran somewhere in like early 90s, mid 90s, something like that. And then there's a second story that picked up like 10 years ago. It took the last episode and just threw it away because the last episode is like a bunch of people are dying or something like that. Um, And it's just like, uh, no, cut off the last episode, start from the second to last episode, run forward. It's, It's this long epic uh, and they've closed it out and uh, it's great. It's just wonderful. And now James Cameron made something and I'm like, oh God, oh God, I don't, I don't, don't, don't ruin it. James don't, don't ruin this. What is this with the creepy eyes? Oh, the creepy eyes are weird. I, <laughs> honestly, I was okay with it. Uh, like, yeah. At least seen it. I'm seen the trailer for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Again, I haven't actually read the manga. I know a little bit about it, but not much. Yeah. But the actual concept of what they do is, I think they very, they did a smart thing where they very intentionally uh, invoked the uh, Uncanny Valley. One of the strange, I, I don't think I've actually seen a situation where the Uncanny Valley was where he wanted to be, you know, where yeah. the director wanted to be. And that's I, that's a very interesting choice. I think it's strong. I think it's, you know, it's very different and it's done in such an intentional way. Yeah. It makes me, to some extent, it makes me, I am a little bit more happier that that choice was made because that makes me think like oh they're taking risks and that's going to be interesting in and of itself as opposed to playing it just like 
straight and boring. I mean, Jakey Battle Angel Alita in the first place, this is not a well-known manga. There were a lot of other mangas to make a movie out of before you reached for this one. So this one was chosen because it is a solid story. It's a good story. I mean, they didn't have Scarlett Johansson play. It though. didn't have Scarlett Johansson play. Movie. Ghost in the Shell is, if you're going to actually go and say like, hmm, what should we actually make a movie out of? Ghost in the Shell would have been one of the things that popped up. Yep. Like, what are you going to do? Take Loop in the Third? Like... <laughs> Like, oh, I wish. would be a great movie, but probably wouldn't be what, what they were looking for, like some sort of science fiction oh, big come on. They, adventure. They could um, totally make like an Ocean's Eleven type style. <laughs> I, would, I would think it would be great, but like the real question is, why didn't you make Ocean's 14? You know, like that would be the thought that Hollywood would be going through. Ghost in the Shell is clearly inspired by a Japanese manga. There's no question about it. They're aiming for multiple audiences at the same exact time. Kinda, I don't know. I didn't see it, so I can't say it's good or bad. But there seem to be a lot of different little problems with it. I hope that Cameron makes Battle Angel Alita pop. It's, it's also really weird because when you, when you read something and you're like, I really like this. Nobody else knows about it. It becomes your secret little thing. <laughs> and now you don't want anybody else to know about it. You know, this is that weird, I, I don't want to share this with the world. You know? Well, if your secret little pleasure that you don't want to share with the world <laughs> is cyber and audio podcasts... <laughs> Or say hello to Blackjack, the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, we actually encourage you to share that out in the world. Yes, yes. No, don't let this be your secret. Oh, no, I'm encouraging this attitude. Yeah. <laughs> don't do? share. What no. Are <laughs> We're too small. It's yeah. fine when you're too small. I was trying to get people to read to say hello, hello to Blackjack. When no, I mean, excuse me. Trying to read uh, Battle Angel Alita when nobody knew about it. It's just now everybody knows about it. It's just like, uh, it was cooler when it was a big man. I liked it before it was cool. <laughs> oh, you know what's left? What, what is left, Rob? It's our closing thoughts. Ah, closing thoughts. Yeah, it's not just called the end. It's called closing thoughts. Well, seeing that this is seeing that you wrote closing thoughts without anything next to it, why don't you start uh, with our closing thoughts? <laughs> that's a... That's a <laughs> <laughs> In summation, um, our, if you're listening to Say Hello to Blackjack, listen to Cyber. If you're listening to Cyber, listen to Say Hello to Blackjack. If you're listening to both of our podcasts. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you'd like to watch Popcorn Roulette. I don't know. Yeah. You know, you keep an ear to the ground when our fiasco um, comes. Rob's going to be on that. Hopefully. I don't, yeah, I don't I, know. I, I know, hope so. He, he has to come an hour and 15 minutes to, to, to have a lot of film. So I understand if you end up bowing out. It, it, these I, things happen. I, I still would like to if we can work, work that out. Yeah. Um, I think that I want to thank everybody that does listen to our projects and gives them a chance. Um, even if they're not your cup of tea. I know that, you know, I advertise it as a BDSM podcast. It's not that sexual no and there's a couple of like wink wink nudge nudge jokes in there but that's really about it it's it's I, where it comes from yeah but it, the the actual content is not that i i so far will have kept it pretty clean i have in every episode we warn people that it's over for a certain age mostly because i want to keep it open yeah that, you know this kind of thing the kind of subject matter can come up you started off your podcast you had this small episode about trigger warnings and i don't feel like you really needed to really exploit that in any one episode i think you were expecting to do it uh yeah on a somewhat regular basis but there just hasn't been a real well, need there we weren't actually expecting to do it on a regular basis we're not we, a regular it, regular basis we were, yeah Expecting to occasionally do it. You were trying to warn your audience, hey, this is a mature audience. Yeah. That's the point here. This, there are going to be... I did something roughly similar in that I just had a character say fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Early on, I was like, that's probably going to have parents shut, shut it off. And that's going to be the end of that. I won't have to have the conversation after that point. That's a good. That's a good method. Just piss them off right early so just they leave. Go for yeah. because it was in the original comic book. So okay. I'm just like I'm not changing that. You say the swear, and then anybody who's got a, a stick up their bum can just get out of here early. But, you know. So one of the reasons why I wanted to put in Florida trigger warnings is because I literally have a character that is designed to be a sex slave. Yeah. Like, Drone 33, you know, has a lot of other functions, but on top of everything else, she is a sentient being yeah. that is created to serve people sexually. That has a lot of potentially really uncomfortable ramification. And to be perfectly honest, 
those are ramifications we are going to visit. Right. There are going to yeah. be hard subject matters up ahead. I didn't want to go right into it early on. I wanted to kind of establish the world, establish who people are, and establish... I wanted people to kind of fall in love with Drone 33, get attached to the character a little bit, and then things are going to get bad. And they have gotten bad. Yeah. Uh, for if you've read all the way up to episode 16, which isn't out yet, but... <laughs> I didn't want it to come out of nowhere. That's where it's really coming yeah, from. Yeah. I didn't want to kind of pull the rug out of people. You know, the vast majority of my um, episodes are totally appropriate for people like, you know, 16 or older. Or yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. Less. I would feel really bad if somebody got invested in the story and then all of a sudden I said, you can't see this pivotal episode. You're right. Don't do it. Right. I also wanted to be really respectful for people that do have trigger warnings because I know people that do very potentially are serious things. It's so it takes so little effort just to respect that. We had a huge debate between Brian and I about how to address the trigger warnings exactly. One thing we avoided doing is saying the specific trigger warnings in the front of the episode because I feel like that goes into spoiler territory very easily. So instead, we you know we mentioned that there's trigger warnings. You have to actually look at the inscription and expand it in order to see all the trigger warnings. So if you are someone who that's relevant information for you, you can do that very easily. And you can do that before you listen to the episode. And I deeply recommend you do so. Because the big episode that came up, that kind of came out of nowhere, was episode 8. Episode 8 was the kind of the, the shift of the season. Before episode 8, every single episode was a different day. Yeah. Like, you know, there was an episode, then it was either the next day or a bit of a time skip, and it kind of fell fall through that. And since episode 8, it's all been the same day. Uh, with one exception, episode 11. Episode 11, this, is, this got messy. We wanted to do something very specific for episode 11, but it didn't make sense to follow the normal timeline. Yeah. So, but because it was so removed from everything else, we just kind of, it's a skip ahead in time. So don't worry, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. It, it'll make sense in the end. <laughs> right, right, right. How about you? This, uh, I went on a random tangent. We what what, my what exactly are we talking this, about? This is quote unquote closing thoughts, <laughs> aka things closing we want thoughts, things we want to talk about but couldn't squeeze in anywhere else. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, I think we, I think we pretty much covered uh, much of what we wanted to talk about here. It's been a great uh, time uh, sitting down with you and sitting down with the audience and uh, having fun and chowing this out. Yeah. Uh, like, I know we just don't get a chance to communicate too often, like, what our plans are. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, it's it's tough because we don't want to bore our audience at the same exact time. I know that there's tons of podcasts where, like, they have an episode and they have, a, like, another episode right behind that. In theory, like, those, those news episodes are supposed to be, like, just these add-ons. It's just like, oh, it's no big deal. Flight fluff or just delete it if you don't want it. But, like, there's something mentally taxing about seeing too much too much news yeah. in your feed, you know? I don't understand why that's the case, but it happens. So we're going to both pu- we're gonna both publish this on our own channels. Yeah. And hopefully they'll listen to it on mine and, you know... They, right, right. And if, because they've already listened to mine, they definitely won't listen to they yours. They won't listen to it on mine. Yeah, that's... They'll just... see that something new came up on their feed on my channel and be like, oh, I don't, I no longer have to pay attention to that yeah, channel. Yeah, because I've obviously <laughs> already listened to this on this episode. Yeah. They're just being duplicated in both things. Anyways... <laughs> Which can be, fa- which by the way can be found at uh, https colon slash slash soundcloud dot com slash cyber dash podcast. And if they went to iTunes and they just searched for it, the best way of searching for cyber would be cyber BDSM, uh, right? That's the thing that's going to be the best thing. To oh, search you're for. probably right. <sighs> it's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're looking to say hello to blackjack, just go to say hello to blackjack dot com. We're also on SoundCloud. We're on YouTube. Um, but uh, if you go to iTunes and you're searching for us, uh, say hello to Blackjack. We'll pretty much give it to you. There's going to be a couple other things in there. Ignore them if they're not audio dramas. I think that some people have like, because it's public domain, some people have like taken yeah. like the comic book pages and like made a, uh, a, a, a slideshow slide yeah, slide of them uh, very cheaply. Um, just ignore that. I'm pretty sure I'm the first thing that pops up at this point anyways. Good, um, should be. Yeah. yeah. Closing thoughts is we should do this again. Yeah, we definitely should do this again. Yeah, this was a great time. Yep. See you when I'm struggling with season three. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I, maybe earlier, maybe you know, depending. Yeah. I I have a fun idea of what to do until season two comes around for a cyber podcast. 
I want to have a bunch of campaign promises from the mayor. Yes. Talk about how he's going to fix things. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's awesome. Next time we'll have to like drag a third podcast into this. Like find someone else who's local and just be like, yeah, news up. Let's just make this super confusing. <laughs> and our fans who only like one podcast are going to be really upset. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Have a good night. Good night, everybody. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.